Why is this important? It's because over my life I have seen God work miraculously. And I can testify of this one fact. I always knew the vital importance of being my brother's keeper wherever it is I've been. Whether it's in the working place, whether it's in the places where I interacted in college as a CU leader, it was vital to identify that I had a role beyond myself. And this is a word to this generation. Let's start caring about each other. Let's genuinely care about our brothers and sisters next to us. The drive towards getting and getting is so strong. And I want to say to you that even though you enjoy the liberty of having teachers having oversight over you, especially those of you in fourth form, at the end of this year when you do your exams, you most likely will stop by in a university. There are no teachers there to wake you up. There are no teachers to watch whether you are going into class or staying in bed. You are virtually on your own. So it's important to identify what are the things that help me to set my life apart. That I can be a distinctive member of society who makes a difference, not just for now, but for the future. Amen. Earth. How can you explain that? There was a, a job assignment given to him to be able to till the ground. I guess the need and demand for food has always been there from the days of Adam and Eve. So you need somebody who could do a bit of farming. Amen? To bring forth the watermelons, to bring forth the maize and beans and everything else. That was his designation at birth. You are not an accident. God has a plan for you. I really appreciate the ministry from the Thika School for the Blind. There is a certain gifting, a sense of music. Their voices harmonize in a way that makes you feel like just closing your eyes and worshiping the Lord. Amen. Amen. And there are many such gifts that God has spread upon you, even though you are so young and nobody recognizes you. God has shared his gifts because none of us, none of us is an accident purpose of Jehovah God. Amen. I am a product of God's divine plan. I'll tell you a testimony I shared the other day. As I was growing up, I remember very clearly the first president of the Republic of Kenya visiting my local church in Limuru. How many people from Limuru here? Limuru schools or Limuru people or Limuru fans or sympathizers? How many from Limuru? Or oh, enough sympathizers on this side. Amen. Hallelujah. In my local church on a Sunday morning, I was barely seven years old, I remember. And that vision was born in my heart. President Jomo Kenyatta, father to the current president, came for a fundraising ceremony. And as I looked at the limousines driving into that place, I kind of got a sense of wanting to know. Because I, from a young age, and I boys, allow me, if you don't like cars, I'm sorry, you might not be a boy, but I love cars. I love cars. I love good cars. I right now have a Range Rover Sport standing right there. I have another car called a Nissan Patrol 2016 model. There are probably seven cars like those in the country. So I love cars, amen? Is it okay to love cars, boys? Yeah, that's a boys thing. I know girls like beauty, nah, nini, nini, nini. But boys love cars. How many girls like, love cars like boys? Oh, okay, okay. Oh, so, fantastic. <laughs> So I saw the cars driving in and they were blowing so much dust, so I was interested. But there was a, a huge security cordon around the presidential motorcade. And I remember clearly, as the service was going on, I sneaked out and I hoped to go and see and admire the limousines that had come with the president. But you know what happens? There's so much security and kids are being shooed away. So at some point when the president came out, I was able to sneak as close as I could. Under the legs of the people, I could be able to pick and see individuals who I knew and we had read from history books. I saw the president. Next to him, I saw the late Mbiyo Koinange, who was the minister of state in his government. 
I saw a minister called James Gishuru, who was a, pre a minister in his government, and I could recognize the faces that I always see on paper. I saw also Charles Njonjo, who was then the Attorney General, and I still remember that as though it was yesterday. So when I saw this image, I remember praying in my heart and I said to God, God, one day, I would love to be standing like those people there. I was seven years old. It was 1970. I remember clearly. Fast forward. God takes me through my, my university. I get employed by multinational companies and get paid a lot of money. I used to be paid a lot of money. We used to go and can still afford to go on holiday abroad. I'm not bragging. I want you to know exactly what happens. Because I was not born from a prosperous family. My father was a career civil servant whose pay slip every time I looked at it, I wondered how we were able to eat. It was not a lot of money. And I was able to access his pay slip. He died a few years ago as a medical assistant after retiring. He went on and worked with the Red Cross. But I know it was not because of the wealth I came from. It was because early on in my life, I plugged into a source that was beyond my father or my relatives. Amen. Amen. And that's what I want to present to you this morning. That you can plug on to the source with Jehovah God and he can pick your life and he can program it. He can take it around to the point and place where your dreams become a reality. Amen. Hallelujah. I have a lot of dreams that became reality. I have sat with presidents from all over the world. In the United Nations. You know what that means? Presidents, from, not, not at the three presidents or five. The UN basically has a hall where all the presidents wait at the point when the conference is starting. And when I worked in State House in 2009 and 2010, 2011, I remember accompanying the president, Kibaki then, they only allow the president and one other person. And guess who was the other person? You are faithfully. So you sit in there and you wonder, am I dreaming or is this a real, am I in a vision or a trance? Only you pinch yourself and realize it is real, real, ukweli. Ukweli wa mambo. What do I attribute that to? Not because I have any tall relatives, but because I have the tallest of them all. Jehovah God, Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. If you believe in that, give him a praise this morning. both presented their offerings to the Lord. They both came and presented what that they had gotten as byproducts of their work through a process of worship. Is it possible that you have come here because there was a school trip but in your heart there is no full commitment to align to the plan and purposes for your life? May God help us to be able to align to worship him in spirit and in truth. The Bible says that God loves those who worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen? Amen. So when you come to God, forget about yourself. Well, there's a chorus we used to sing. So let's forget about ourselves. Concentrate on him and worship him. Worship him, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Cain brought the byproduct of his farming. Abel brought the byproduct of his shepherd skills. And the Bible says that as they brought those offerings, Jehovah rejected the sacrifice of Cain and accepted the sacrifice of Abel. Now, I know theologians have argued until they have gone hoarse about why God rejected Cain and why God accepted Abel. I don't want to get into the argument because I'm a simple preacher. I don't know the dynamics of, of um, the theology behind that. All I know is that Jehovah God chooses to do what he wills and nobody questions or advises him. Amen? Yeah. You will see two people in a class the same teacher comes in, gives the same information, and one will yield 90% and another one will yield 37%. Not 
Now, the 37% may start thinking, oh, God doesn't care for me. Oh, God is biased. It's not about that. Sometimes we focus on the wrong things. We think God is blessing the 90% and ignoring the 37%. Guess what? Guess what? I told you God has a gift and a place for each and every one of us. How do we unleash that gift? By aligning our lives, by plugging into the source that we know what God has as a plan for our lives. So I don't know why somebody will get 37 in the same class where somebody is getting 90. You don't have an answer as well. And next exam, the other one of 37 gets 36, the one of 90 gets 94. I'm talking about reality. This is not rocket science. This is things that you go through in your school, all of you, all of you here. If you don't have that sort of scenario, put up your hand. All 90s, you have all 90s in your school? Huh? Apana? Unless you want to lie. Today, we are, today is Sunday. God has a reason why he chose to reject Cain's sacrifice and accept Abel's. However, when I read the same reference in the New Testament, I start understanding there was something to do with the state of the heart of Cain versus the state of the heart of Abel. Because many times we want to impress God with what we bring to him. If I'm a millionaire and I bring a million shillings to the Harambe, then we all think God is more impressed about me because I brought a million shillings. If a mama who is just struggling brings two cobs of maize, we think, oh, she is very mean to God. No, 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 no. May God help us to understand that he cares more about our heart disposition than he cares about what we present to him. Amen. 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 God cares about our heart disposition more than he cares about what we bring before him. Cain, instead of humbling himself, gives signs of strong indignation at God in his refusal to favor him. God in turn rebukes Cain. Cain hardens his heart and his father confirmed in his impertinence. His jealousy for Abel. That's the other scene that I want to say that sometimes overtakes us. We get jealous. When you see that guy hitting 90 or that girl hitting 90, we start feeling, you know, Kia, this hatred. Like, you, you know, how can they get 90? And they're not as good looking as I am. Eh? Envy and jealousy are two of the most horrendous scenes playing out in the world today. People are jealous of you because you look like you're doing okay. And the Bible says those scenes unrepented, culminated in deliberate murder. In verse number 9, the Lord Jehovah says, Where is Abel, thy brother? And he said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? He kills him and then goes to God greater God is than I can bear. That's the closest that Cain came to repenting. He tells God, God, my punishment is greater than I can bear. And God says, behold, thou hast been driven. Okay, he says, behold, thou hast driven me out of this day from the face of the earth and from the face shall I be hid and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth and it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. And the Lord is touched by that statement and says, therefore, Whosoever slays Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. God was touched by those. He was still complaining, even though he was in trouble. But somehow God picked that to mean that Cain has a little change of mind. And that's how he sent him to go to the land of Nod and to go and settle there for the rest of his life. Now, I want to say one other thing. That as human beings, we are interdependent. We depend on each other. The reality of that came to me 
on Friday of this past week. Was it seventh? Was not Friday. Which when was seventh? Was that Wednesday? On seventh? On Wednesday? When uh, seventh was which day? Thursday. Yes, on Thursday. I tell you a true story. I was in a room where somebody was having a firearm. They didn't know how to handle the firearm, so the firearm dropped and a bullet ejected while we were sitting in that room. A bullet flew out. The reality about the fact that that bullet could have hit anybody, including myself, was so real. Because this man was in a panic. And I can tell you at that point is when you remember to pray those prayers you had forgotten to pray in the morning. It was not a, a, a theft situation, it was an accident. The bullet hit the ground and then the shell went and hit an officer in that office and he was hit on the head. Thankfully he didn't die. But I was saying that thing could have been aimed in my direction. But somehow I think God knew I was coming to preach today so he made sure there was no disaster. Amen. What am I saying? We're interdependent as members of the human race. At, we rushed to the help of the person who was hurt and were quickly taken to hospital. What am I saying? We need each other. You cannot live and be able to be successful in life by thinking that you can do things on your own. And that's why the topic of responsibility and accountability is so important. Because nobody is an island by themselves. Yesterday I met somebody who was telling me about a very rich man from Congo. He's a billionaire. This man sold a company in Congo for 150 million US dollars. Can you imagine how much that is? This is not money for the dams. I know you're thinking it's a dam, dams money. This is not about the dams. This is an investor who sold a company for 150 million dollars. The man is so unsafe in his own country. Do you know where he's hiding right now? He lives in Brussels, in Belgium. The man told, told me he's a consultant. He went and did some work for him. And he did not invoice him, but he said, you, you deserve something. He says, yeah, yes, I deserve whatever it is you can give me. I have not done any work. We didn't have an agreement. He says, no, 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 you deserve something. At the end of it, he gave him an envelope. Put him on, on his private jet from Congo back to Nairobi. When the guy got to Nairobi, he went, opened the envelope and found $30,000 as a little token of saying Asante. So this man, chapter 3 and verse 12, Cain's heart was no longer pure. It had a criminal propensity springing from envy and jealousy, which rendered both his offering and his person unacceptable before God. His evil work and hatred for his brother culminated in the act of murder, specifically evoked by the opposite character of Abel's works and the fact that God accepted his offering. Could be that you look at what's happening to you, your desk mate or that person in your dorm or that person who you don't like very much and it looks like everything's working okay and jealousy and envy is welling up. And that, that makes the, the real reason why you can't move forward. Because the envy and jealousy are like cancer to a spiritual life. You can't be able to move forward. If you walk and live in envy and jealousy. Abel is ranked as the first martyr. A martyr is a person who gives up his life for the cause that they believe in. In this case, the cause of Jesus, of the cause of Christ. The Bible says in Matthew 25, as I come to a close, that verse 35. Matthew 25, verse 35. There's Jesus speaking. Sorry, 23, not 25. 23, verse 35. Again, Jesus speaking. Verse 34 says, Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them you shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall use scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. That upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth. From the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barchias, whom you slew between the temple and the 
altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. Bloodletting as a result of envy, murder, is not within the plan that God and not get tired of doing good. For he who called you is faithful. In Hebrews 12 verse 24 as I close. This is the fourth closing. The Bible says and to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. The blood of Jesus avails for you cleansing. The blood of Jesus avails for us forgiveness. The blood of Jesus avails for us acceptance. The blood of Jesus avails for us reconciliation with God. Be ye reconciled to God. If you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, my prayer as we come to a close to my preaching session is that you would invite him. And ask him to give a bearing to your life from this point henceforth. I did that many years ago. I have no regrets about the power of God at work in my life. I have dedicated my, the rest of my life to be coming to school such as this gathering and others. To talk about that love because there is nothing greater I have seen through all the exploits that I have lived through. I could have chosen to do some big jobs. Make a lot of money do a lot of things, but I realize all those things are in vain unless and until souls are reconciled to God. So I want to give you a chance right now as we bring this service to a close. If you're within the sound of my voice and you're not saved, I will give you a chance to invite Jesus Christ into your life. Also, if you're within the sound of my voice and you have backslidden, you think the world has anything to offer, I want to challenge you to forsake those wicked ways and recommit your life to God. I will guarantee you that God will hold you. The Bible says, and to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above that which we ask or imagine according to the power that worketh within us. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all the fear, the doubt, the unbelief, the sense of lack of commitment that is there in your life. And he can restore your life to one of joy, one of peace, one of forgiveness, one of reconciliation with him. If there are those standing up, come and join me right here. Yeah, If you're standing up, this is your chance to come and join me here for salvation. This is salvation time. Yes, we do this publicly because when we acknowledge Jesus Christ, see Kifunga Macho, Apana, it is a public declaration. Stand right here. Simama Apa. Yeah, come, 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 come. I know there are more people who God is talking to. Come. You need to be saved. This is salvation time. It's time to be saved. It's time to know Jesus. It's time to have your sins forgiven. It's time to know that your name is written in the book of life. There's no other way you will go to heaven. Not through the prayers of your father or your fathers. Apana, ni kuokoka, kukubali yesu, aingie ndani ya maisha yako, akusamehe dhambi, iliweze kuwa mwana wa mungu. Iyo ndio nafasi tuko nao sasa. Haijalishi umetoka shule gani? Haijalishi nini imefanyika kwako? Wakati huu ni wakati wa wokovu. Yesu anakuita. Njo, njo kwa Yesu, njo kwa Yesu, njo kwa Yesu. Yeah, people are coming. I know they are more coming because God spoke to me and said, I will bring them to myself. All you need to do is speak my word. All you need to do is speak my word. I will do the rest. So God is talking to people here. Hata hapa Mungu anazungumzia tu. Si you member lakini hujaokoka. Wewe tu ni siu ama siye. Inaitwa siye ama siu. Ama CD. Could be CA, CB, CD, CX. Come. If you're not saved, come and get saved. And whoever Jesus called, he called them publicly. Haku feature. Hapana, hatufungi macho. Kuja, kuja, kuja. More people getting saved. Come, 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 come. Come and get saved. Come and meet Jesus. For those of you, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, as long as day follows night, the decision you're about to make today will change your total landscape and for your families as well. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, sir. There are more people coming because God is talking to you. This is not a charade. This is business. This is business with the God of heaven. The God, the creator, the one who gives you breath. 
We are dealing because we want to be responsible and we also want to be accountable. Amen. Hallelujah. There are more people coming. More people are coming. You know, you know some of you people have left. I'm not saying any accident will happen. Things like those have happened. You, you are in a school bus. Nini, nini. Wengine wanapenya wanaenda straight jahanam. Straight. Because there's no, you have no excuse. Kuse, oh, mungu. Nini, nini. Ulipata na fasi ukaringa. Unaringia mungu. What do you have to show for that kuringa in? Wewe, uja okoka. Unaonyesha nini na iyo kuringa? Unaringia nani? Eh? God is calling you, God is calling you, God is calling you. Don't harden your heart. There are more people, more people sitting now. And I will not finish. Niangalie tuangaliane sisi, malizi. Eh, nakungoja, eh. I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Because God, by his spirit, is saying to me, more people need to respond to this call of salvation. And I know believers are praying for you. Because they care. We are all members of one family, the family of God. God cares about you. Yes, thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. I know some of you are coming. If you're going out, just go out quietly. But I know some of you are coming to the altar. Coming here to say, we need to meet Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Those of you who are here, I want to say, I'm so thankful you responded to this call of salvation. You did it because you had the word. And that word has a power to change your life. It changed my life. I tell you, it didn't take a, like a bigger bracadabra. It is a simple acknowledgement that you're a sinner. And that you, through this action, will be able to place before God a sacrifice. That he will say, yes, I like it. Because it's a sacrifice of humility. You've humbled yourself to come before this whole congregation. You could have feared and said, I want to be prayed quietly in a corner. But with eyes open, you came. That's a sacrifice of obedience. And God loves obedience. So I want to lead you into a prayer of inviting Jesus Christ into your heart. And I want the believers out there to put your hands up and point, pray for them as we pray this prayer. Lift your hands above your hands, those of you standing here, and close your eyes and pray this prayer. And say, Dear Lord Jesus Christ. Say it like you mean it. Dear Lord Jesus Christ. I have acknowledged today that I am a sinner. In Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ for accepting to walk with them from here on. I pray that you'll give them power. You give them your spirit, Lord, that from here they walk a victorious life. Oh Lord, as you have heard the, the, the minister of the word, what you did in his life. Father, we pray that you do the same to every young man and woman standing here in front and others sitting down, we pray that your word will work in their lives and that you raise them up, Lord, to the highest point in this life. Bless their lives, O oh God, and I just open their understanding and their, the vision of you and the vision of the kingdom. Fill them with power, Lord, to be witnesses of you, Lord. Therefore, bless them and, and Lord, see them through this life or being youth, oh God, because we came through there. We saw you and you walked with us, Lord. Give them victory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Bishop. Listen. Yes, come on, give a good applause if you want to. Give applause to the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Bishop. Amen, amen, amen. Now listen, listen. I have a, one or two things I just want to say to you. From this day henceforth, I want to tell you your life is different. The Lord has opened like, an, it's like a fresh page. The Bible says all who are in Christ Jesus are a new creation. You know a new creation? How many like, like new things? I like new things. I've had occasion of driving a new car. God opened a door for me to get a car from the showroom for which I didn't pay a single shilling. So new, you're a new, think about yourself, new. Mpia. The Bible says the old is passed away the new has started. So, start living like Mashidas, uh -uh, number issues. God sorts out issues. How many people want God to do something supernatural? You came in here and you just want God to sort out a certain issue in your life. In your life. You want issues sorted. I know I don't want to go to the specifics. I know I'm a slave of time and I know time is not working. Yeah, just stand up to your feet. Mahali uko. Wale wakona issues. Issues, unataka mungu wa intervene. Haijalishi nini? 
Na wengine wameingia kwenye mambo zingine lakini najua God can sort issues from wherever you are. We are going to pray a prayer of faith. Maombi ya imani ni mzuri because the Bible says the prayer of faith shall raise those who are sick and if they have forgi- for committed any sins their sins shall be forgiven them. Hiyo ndio Biblia. Amen. Let's pray. Father in the name of Jesus I want to thank you and to praise you for this wonderful people. I thank you because God they came here expecting from you and you are no man's debtor Lord. You do not call your people together in vain. And I want to pray for each and every one of them for the needs represented. Specifically for those Lord who have come in front who have issues of health. We pray and ask that in the mighty name of Jesus may you release your healing virtue and cause healing to flow over their bodies now in the name of Jesus. Lord cause every infirmity to bow down to the name of Jesus. Cause every sense of sickness and ailing to bow down to the power of the name of Jesus and bring wholeness of mind, body and soul to them who are sick in their bodies. Lord, there are many other needs represented here, oh Father God. Uh, there's those needs that are have to do with the family members who are not talking to each other. On the word of the faith of the we, we have uh, the ushers who are going to come to us and uh, as we will be giving uh, we have some uh, exhibitors who will be speaking to us we we'll give them uh, some three minutes each uh, so that we can redeem time so I want to pray so that uh, we give but also um, in our giving uh, Kiabu County we are digital so in case your money is in your M-Pesa you don't need to go and withdraw. You can simply uh, send it to the directory. I will read to you our M-Pesa till number. So we have, uh, you go to your M-Pesa. We have Ripa and na M-Pesa. The till number is 124257. I'll repeat. 124257. And this is uh, the pay, uh, not pay bill, till number. So take note of that. Buy goods and services. So in case your money is in your phone, don't worry. Just uh, do as we have uh, directed you. So I want us to pray so that after that we uh, give uh, those who are moving, let's uh, settle down. Let's settle down. So let's uh, pray. Our Father and our God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you and we worship you. Thank you because of such a powerful word that you've released unto us, O God. And I pray that you are going to help us to read that word. Jehovah, we thank you. We worship you. It's now time to uh, worship you with our offerings, my Father. I pray that you're going to bless us, O God, in accordance with your word. The Bible says the heart that gives is the one that is blessed. And therefore, I pray in a heart that is going to be stretched, even in this giving, for the propagation of the gospel of the kingdom of God, that that heart is going to be blessed. We thank you and we worship you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's clap unto the Lord. I would say that all religions are represented, including the Muslims. We take care of your spiritual welfare. We have different champions stationed at the student welfare, meaning that you as Christians, once you join Mount Kenya University, you shall continue or we shall take care of your spiritual welfare the same way we take care of your academic. We, I may not be able to talk about all the courses, but we have certificate, diploma, degree, masters, and PhD in 12 schools. Some of the schools are School of Medicine, School of Clinical Medicine, Nursing, Pharmacy, Public Health, uh, School of Business, School of Education, School of uh, Social Science, School of Engineering and Beauty Environment, and uh, many others. You're most welcome to visit our tent. Uh, we have a free prospectus.
university, I would say that all religions are represented, including Muslims. We take care of your spiritual welfare. We have trained at the student welfare, meaning that you as Christians, once you join university, you shall continue or we shall take of your spiritual affair the same way we take care of your academic. We talk about our courses, but we have specific diploma, degree, master's and PhD in 12 schools. Some of the schools are School of Medicine, School of Clinical Medicine, Nursing, Pharmacy, Public Health, uh, uh, School of Business, School of Education, School of Social Science, School of Engineering and Biota Environment, uh, uh, many are. You're most welcome to our tent. We have a free project. Feeling for help loans, bursaries, among other resources that we might pull 
to help especially the needy students. The, the needy students. I want to say that we recognize talents. So for those students who are talented, and I'll give an example. If you are the Ronaldo in your secondary school, don't shy away. Apply at ZTEC, and you'll be given a full sponsorship. So you are going to take your courses, whether degree, diploma, or certificate, fully paid by ZTEC University. We have arrangement for those students who are coming from different regions in this country. Could be you are here and you are wondering what will happen when I join. So we have hostels for those students who are coming from far. Our programs are organized in a manner that is very comfortable for everyone. And I'm saying this because we have teachers here who might need to further their expertise in different areas. They can come to us. We have an evening program which runs from 5.30 to 8.30. And for those who still cannot come to the campus, we have another campus called ZTEC Digital School. ZTEC Digital School needs you to have a laptop and internet. You will be taken through your learning process like any other student only that during the evaluation, you have to visit our campus because examinations have to be controlled. We need to be exactly sure that whoever is sitting for the exam is indeed the student who came to us. We have short courses, and they are tailored for corporates. So if you have a training need, you can attract us. We come and sit with you. We look at your needs. We can come up with a tailored course specifically for you people. And at the end of the course, you get the certificate of participation. We have a tent outside there. I don't want to take much time. So we'll give more information on our programs. And we'll also do career advisory. If you are here, you are a student, you are not very sure what is outside there, we are ready and you are going to offer that advice. We are also encouraging the secondary school principals and the leadership of these schools. Invite us. If you invite us, we'll come and offer this information down there, and it is for free. So thank you. God bless you. Enjoy the rest part of the service. Thank you so much. Let's have uh, Cascade Institute, Simon Nganga, speaking to us for two minutes. And then after that, Focus TV, uh, we have Dennis, who is going to wind up that section. Thank you very much. Uh, invited preacher, who is a guest preacher, the organizers of KSCF, all the students, principals, again, what uh, bonus fuel. God is good and all the time. Thank you. Yetu ni machache sana. Because as you have heard, Cascade Institute of Hospitality is an international hotel school. So we don't have much to talk about. Apart from maybe our partnership with Kenya Students uh, Christian Kenya Students Christian Fellowship. Kiambu chapter. I have good news for you, students, to tell you that in our latest board meeting, a resolution was passed to give KSCF Kiambu chapter a permanent office at our building. Uh, so that means all the information about the KSCF will be centrally placed uh, at the Cascade Plaza in Thika. Naistoshe, we have given you uh, free conference facilities. Whenever you are doing your leaders training, mutakuwa mnafanyia mkutano huko at no charges. And, and we will be providing the meals. And then our CEO, uh, Christian students from Cascade Institute of Hospitality, they have volunteered 
to join the Students Mission Ministry. So, what I want to assist uh, away from that, we have said that uh, we will be offering monetary kind sponsorship whenever you have such events that we have done today. Every event we have, you have, we shall be working uh, with you, beggar kwa beggar. Sawa sawa, kwa hivyo watu jawa Now, as I said, we are an international hotel school. That means we develop highly skilled human resource for three-star, four-star, and five-star hotels. So if you have a passion to become a hotel manager, at Villa Rosa Kempinski. Wangapi wanajua Kempinski? Wangapi wangetaka kukua manager wa Kempinski? Hamwezi taka kulipua over one million shillings a month. Wangapi wangetaka kulipua over one million shillings a month. We are training those people. You join Cascade. Uh, you will train hotel managers. We train chefs, executive chefs. Chef wa Villa Rosa analipo over 2 million a month. Wangapi wangetaka kuwa over 2 million. By the way, our students, when you are attachment sahi, wako at Sankara we have six, Weston we have ten, Villa Rosa we have five, Sarova we have 15 students who are on attachment. And these are students have started their journey to becoming hotel managers, and hotel chefs, and chefs are divided into two. Executive chefs, ambao tunawaita hot kitchen, and the pastry chefs, ambao wanadil na mambo ya baking, keki za harusi, mikata na wapi. I don't want to take much of your time. At the back there, at our tent, utapata the student who is on attachment at Villa Rosa, the chef. He will be dressed as a chef, experience Peter, make sure you, you smile. Make sure you do what? Make sure you do what? I have a testimony that was Yachi. Just a minute. I have a testimony. One day, I did my exam. And nilipeleka exam nyumbani. Nikiwa nimemakiwa exam na bonagishaga. Nikapelekea my mom results nikiwa form for. And this is what she told me. Young man, you know what? You are a disappointment. Akaniambia, now Dennis, this is what you'll do. Umalize shule, tukupeleke ka college, uishika life, upate ka bibi, uendele. But, do I look like someone who a life? I say no. I came to realize that the decision to change everything is within me. Bwana sifiwe. So I decided to change. And I improved. And I became a better person. And out of that testimony, I came out of, I came with three words. Believe, behave, become. Do what? Believe, behave, become. Believe, behave, become. We as young people, do we believe in ourselves? If you believe in yourself, you know I'm corner. And by this, by talking about believing in yourself, I'm not talking about believing in yourself like guys when you're neza and a approach them apana. I'm talking about believing in achieve whatever you want to achieve in life. Bwana sifiwe. If you believe you want to achieve success in your life, you know I'm gonna. You have to believe in yourself. The other thing you have to behave. Kuna culture imekuja kwa shule inaitua odi. Odi. Those guys when you have to long flani, unatembea design flani. Let me tell you one thing. There is no office utaenda upate odi. Young people, there is no office utaenda upate odi. So you have to start like a professional. Bwana asifiwe. Bwana asifiwe. So you have, if you want to become a good presenter, like my sister here, start your physical appearance means a lot. But you cannot become a good presenter na kishatikiyako kimiachilia hivi. Wana asifiwe. If you want to become a doctor, tembea o kiguza watu, hey, temperature yako yiko juhu, you start by practicing. Wana asifiwe. If you want to become a lawyer, your language is a key thing. That good English, work on it. Bwana asifiwe. And finally, let me tell you one thing. If you believe and you behave, automatically you become what you want to become in life. Bwana asifiwe. But all, all those things, you cannot be able to achieve until the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of, and the rest shall be. 
Seek first the kingdom of God. And I will not talk much. Let me introduce Vicky to come and continue. Mungu wa bless to Sarah. Thank you so much, Denise. How is everyone doing? I will not take your time because I know it's lunchtime. So my name is Victoria Chebet. I am a host at Focus TV as well as the PR manager. Um, we are a leading solution giving station through positive and interactive programming. And our target audience, can you imagine, is the youth. So we are here. We're excited to be here. We are live. And we are taking this thing international because of all our live streams. I'm standing in for, on behalf of our managing director, one of the toughest and strongest people I know, Dorcas Kamau. She says hello, and she wants to say thank you so much to Kay. KSCF for what you're doing, impacting the young people with Christian values, because we know that without God, there's nothing that we can do as individuals. And I'm so grateful to you uh, for what you're doing. Uh, just a word from our MD, if you fear nothing, then nothing can stop you from getting what you want. Do not allow the enemy to stop you from imagining, from dreaming, because dreaming is free. Imagination is free, so you can dream, and the mind will create a path to what you're dreaming. Don't be scared to dream, all right? Be determined, work smart, and you will get the best in life. Thank you so much. Um, have a nice day. Thank you so much, uh, Focus TV, for that. I want to release the priest team with Angle. Let's clap for them. I know they were willing, but in the interest of time, we're going to give them uh, during the other time. So I want to invite Elijah to come and uh, uh, proceed from there. So let's uh, clap for him as he proceeds. Thank you so much. It's lunchtime, I know. Sawa, sawa. Uh, afternoon, we are not having a preaching, so don't worry. We are going to have some ministrations, and then we do a bit. We, cut a, we have a cake, by the way. Tutaikata, tutaikura. Sawa, sawa. So, before we go for lunch, our director is here and she will not be with us in the afternoon. But I have two kids. Where are the grandchildren? Where are the grandchildren? Yes, you have two kids to come and say a bus. Then the principal will come on stage and invite our director. Then to end lunch, a champion TV want to shoot a crowd of students for a promotion. Then they will do a shooting. They crowd so, mutokeo sana upande huu tukienda lunch. Then the teachers, this year we are a bit organized. We have a tent for you. Mutakula kama mmeka. Sasawa, it will be behind here. And there is enough food, but there is no tea. I know teachers love tea. So, <laughs> sawa, sawa, sawa. So, thank you so much, thank you so much. Watu watoto waseme memory bus. Sini sawa waseme? Sini sawa waseme? And then we have the principal come to recognize other principals and our TSC County Director. Thank you so much. Bishop. My name is Bishop Henry Mulandi. I love the Lord as my savior. The Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make it boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he had me, and saved me out of all my fires. They looked to him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around him who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for there is no one to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Psalms 34, verse 1 to 10. Thank you. We appreciate them very much. Hey! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Those are our future high school uh, students. 
will be there will be a seal chairman, seal chair lady, school president, seal chair lady. They are already there. Sawa, thank you so much. God bless you so much. Thank you. That's why we always tell high schools: stop entertainment, learn the Bible. To quiet up and kubajuka, to kubajuka. You come and do the Bible. Sawa, sawa. The principal, please come on stage and uh, recognize some principals. Then in the afternoon after lunch, take the lunch very fast. We have something very interesting. But we are still live on focus. Live on focus. Star Times channel 132. Go TV channel 189 stroke 182. That is the best thing we can have for KSF. Kiambu, of course, through our <laughs> very senior Principal, Mr. Mwangi, when he was asked to accommodate all of you, he said, why not? And I asked him, are you sure you have enough accommodation? And he said, the bishop will provide. And I said, how will the bishop do that? And he said, God has already destined it. Can we thank all of them, including God? Now, every time I look at this, and I think it's the second time for the six or seven months that I have been in Kiambu that I'm attending something like this. I love your vision. It says a generation of role model Christians having godly values and playing an active and positive role in church and society. Our teachers who are here, can I see you by a show of hands? Can we clap for these role models that we have? They always say that teachers will be rewarded in heaven. I want to say that teachers have always been rewarded because anytime you see a smart student around, whether in uniform, or not, you feel, you know, pleasurable. It's always their pleasure to see you. Can you clap for all the smart students around? We are always reminded that when the body looks good, when you're smart, like the young girl you saw here from Focus TV, you know, continue like that. One day he told me, I've bought a plot in Ruai, and I said, that is very good, start planting. And when I was building my house where I'm staying in now, Cyrus said, Mama Paul, unaishi kama mkikuyu. Because I got into a house that had not even been plastered. And before I knew it, he told me, I've bought a plot in Limuru, and I'm going there with Mama Kogi, his young wife. And now that he's staying in his own compound and he keeps telling everybody, this woman helped me to see what I am doing now. Cyrus, can you sit down? But clap for him before he sits. <laughs> the Bible tells us that we should leave the talk. We should do what we are telling people to do. Don't just tell them to be a generation of role models, practice it. So I'm proud to showcase him. Now this lady, I met her the other day in a matatu when I was coming to Kiambu and he stopped. I mean, she stopped and she said, Madam, where are you going to in a matatu? And I said, I'm now the county director, TSC county director, Kiambu. And I told her, what are you doing here? And she said, I'm in a theological college. I want to be a preacher. And I said, oh my God, that is good because we used to work with her at the Teacher Service Commission in the headquarters. And one day when I was in the corridor, she had disagreed with our boss. I will say it as it is, I'm sorry. <laughs> so I, she was so annoyed and I called her and I hugged her. And I said, what is the problem? And he say, she said, Chedotum has really annoyed me. We talked and then we agreed. She told me, Madam, when I become of age, I want to be like you. And I told her, change your life. Be a good girl. And I was so proud that day in the Matatu, about a month or so ago, when I met her, and she was preaching to the, to the people in that Matatu. 
and she said this is part of what I'm learning to do. And I said, thank you to you, we'll support you. And I'm glad to see Victoria has arrived. Madam Victoria. <laughs> when you see two directors present, it means we are with you. Can you clap for the two of us? Smama, Madam Wakwone, even if you'll talk to them later. <laughs> this is the County Director of Education. The other day it was Ladies' Day. So we are ladies in Kiambu, and we are going to help you walk, okay? Where there are mothers, we know there's food. So the food is here with you, and we want to feed our stomachs with this food that is called Jesus Christ until everybody says we can't eat no more because God is in with us. Clap for yourselves. And as I go down, I want you to appreciate yourselves and anybody who is next to you by telling them God loves you. God loves you and God loves you abundantly. Have a good afternoon. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Madam Regina. We are grateful for you. She came all the way from Nakuru and drove to be here. We want to assure you, the two directors, Madam Victoria Mulili and uh, Madam Regina Pondo, that KSF will give you the best support you have ever wanted for a school. And we are all here for you. The spiritual support and the character. And we want you to be the examples in other counties. When Kiambu bans no school, you tell them we gave them to Jesus. And, uh, and uh, before we break for lunch, the 